So a little bit about the NCCP, although I'm sure everyone here this morning is, is uh, fully au fait with it. So it's a HSE directorate that manages and delivers cancer control on a whole population basis. Established in 2007 to implement the then National Cancer Strategy, it's currently implementing the third iteration of that, running from 2017 to 2026. With aims to reduce cancer incidence and mortality, improve outcomes and quality of life for people living with cancer or cancer survivors. In terms of the cancer burden in Ireland, overall one in two people living in Ireland will be diagnosed with some form of invasive cancer in their lifetime, leading us to 24,000 invasive cancers excluding non-melanoma skin cancer and 9,000 cancer deaths in Ireland every year. However, as we saw in the earlier video, almost half of all cancers are preventable. Cancer prevention, just to reiterate, is highlighted as a cornerstone of the National Cancer Strategy as it offers the most cost-effective, long-term approach for cancer control. And prevention can be achieved by reducing exposure to modifiable risk factors, for example, reducing UV exposure, eliminating cigarette smoking, and reducing or eliminating alcohol consumption. Alcohol is a known carcinogen. So way back in 1988, the WHO's IARC, so the International Agency for Research and Cancer, classified alcohol as a group one carcinogen. So right up there with the highest risk group with asbestos, radiation and tobacco. However, it wasn't until 2023 that the WHO came out and said that there is in fact no safe level of alcohol consumption and that risk of cancer increases with any amount of alcohol consumption. This increase in cancer risk is linked to a number of pathways and um, this includes the generation of toxic metabolites. So alcohol contains ethanol, which is converted to acetaldehyde and is then broken down via an enzyme to harmless acetate. However, if acetaldehyde builds up in the tissues, you can end up having chromosomal rearrangements and DNA repair mismatch. And this damage can increase your cancer risk. In addition, some individuals have enzyme deficiencies, which means they can't break down the acetaldehyde and they're also at an increased cancer risk if they drink alcohol. Furthermore, alcohol increases your circulating estrogen, so this increases your breast cancer risk. It reduces folate, which increases cancer risk. And it also has a solvent effect. So it's a highly effective delivery system. So the alcohol damages the cells of the upper aerodigestive tract and it then allows toxins such as those from cigarette smoke to be delivered and taken up by those cells. So those who smoke and drink alcohol are particularly at risk of an increased cancer risk. Finally, alcohol is highly calorific and as Aoife will speak to shortly, this is an independent risk factor increasing your risk of cancer as well. When we look at alcohol attributable cancers, we can see that the Global Burden of Disease study in 2020 estimated that alcohol caused 1,000 cases of cancer in Ireland. This cancer, uh, alcohol is causally linked to cancer across seven sites. So we can see here that alcohol causes nearly a third of cancers in the mouth and pharynx, almost a quarter of cancers in the larynx, a fifth of cancers in the esophagus and liver. And while proportionally causes a lower proportion of cancers in terms of breast cancer and colorectal cancer, we see these cancers more frequently. So that translates into higher numbers. Overall, 1,000 cases of alcohol attributable cancer in Ireland in 2020 certainly calls for concern. In addition, the population attributable fraction is given as 3.9% in this key study, and this is the reduction in population disease or alcohol attributable cancer that would occur if alcohol exposure was removed. So how much are we actually drinking in Ireland? So Healthy Ireland data from last year told us that 70% of respondents are consuming alcohol in the last month and 38% are consuming alcohol at least once a week. OECD uh, data tells us that the uh, alcohol uh, consumption per capita for 2023 came in at 9.9 .9 litres, which is reassuring in that, that <coughs> apologies, that that number is, <coughs> excuse me, is decreasing uh, in recent years. However, it's important to remember that this is an average number and this actually includes people who don't drink as well. So in fact, those who drink are drinking more than this. Another key point to remember in terms of alcohol consumption is that it is ethanol, as we remember that's the key ingredient from the previous slide, and not the beverage type that drives cancer risk. So are people aware of this alcohol cancer link? It would seem from looking at the international literature that the general population is not aware. 
This is a key scoping review that was led out by the WHO published last year. They looked at 32 high quality studies across the EU and the UK and they found that awareness of the alcohol cancer link was low, less than 50% in all cases. In addition, we have research done closer to home using Healthy Ireland data. This was conducted by colleagues in the HRB and Doyle et al. And they found that awareness of alcohol and breast cancer was particularly low, using Irish Healthy Ireland data coming in at 21%. <coughs> Excuse me. So in terms of the research question for this particular study, what we wanted to do was look at awareness of alcohol as a modifiable risk factor for cancer in Ireland using data from the inaugural National Cancer Survey conducted by the NCCP in 2022. So the aims and objectives of the study were to conduct a literature review on the topic and then to look at secondary data analysis of the National Cancer Survey database to establish prevalence of unprompted awareness of alcohol as a risk factor for cancer, to explore any associations of sociodemographic and our health and our lifestyle factors with awareness of the alcohol cancer link, and to develop recommendations for evidence-based interventions. In terms of the framework, then we can see that this was an adult population, 18 years plus, the concept was awareness of alcohol as a modifiable risk factor for cancer, and this was all within the context of cancer prevention. So the National Cancer Survey data collection was conducted by Ipsos on behalf of the NCCP. This was a nationally representative sample of 2,874 adults conducted in the Republic of Ireland between January and May 2022 conducted by phone using random digit dialing, and there was a sample size calculation giving a target of 2,850 interviews, and we can see that that was exceeded. <coughs> so the questionnaire itself then was based on validated population-based cancer surveys, which have been conducted in other jurisdictions, and the demographic questions were based on the National Healthy Ireland Survey. So there were six sections, two looking at demographics and four looking at awareness, attitudes and behaviour. There were two types of awareness that were sought. So firstly, unprompted awareness, which is recall. And this was elicited using open-ended types of questions. In addition, prompted awareness was sought, and this is known as recognition. And this was elicited using close-ended questions where the respondents were provided with a list of answers and they had to choose however many they wanted to. For this current study, it was unprompted awareness was selected as the key response of interest as it is least biased and closest to action. <clears throat> when we look then at the questions, so briefly the pre-survey demographics. So first of all, the cancer grouping. So for anyone who answered yes to themselves having had cancer and our spouse and our immediate family member having had cancer, they were included in a composite variable of cancer experience. For question four, we looked at the unprompted awareness of cancer risk factors. So what things do you think could increase a person's chance of developing cancer? And it's important to remember that this was all done over the phone, so this truly was a spontaneous response. For question seven, beliefs regarding alcohol, the respondents were asked, I'm now going to read out some opinions that you might hear about alcohol. To what extent do you agree or disagree with each one? So in terms of the results, the prevalence of awareness, so of 2,874 respondents, 43.7 respondents had unprompted awareness of alcohol as a risk factor for cancer. So it doesn't seem too bad until we put it into context and see that 81.6% of those respondents had unprompted awareness of smoking as a risk factor for cancer. Looking at the demographics, we can see that there was a fairly even gender distribution in terms of age. The 18 to 44 year old was the highest proportion group coming in at 43.6. The majority of respondents were born in Ireland. The largest proportion had a tertiary level education coming in at 41%. The majority of respondents had high levels of medical literacy, a fairly even distribution of that cancer experience, which we remember was answering yes to self and our spouse and our immediate family. Um, figures slightly higher than the Healthy Ireland data for alcohol consumption, so 45.8% drinking weekly or more, with non-drinkers coming in at 2.6%. And then a fairly even distribution of physical activity, and the majority of respondents were non-smokers. <clears throat> when we look at awareness then, this graph shows us unprompted awareness of alcohol as a risk factor for cancer. Here we have some of the variables uh, selected, but across all variables that we analysed, we can see that awareness ranged from 35 to 47%. So certainly very low. 
And this table is very busy, but essentially what this represents is a multivariable logistic regression model where we looked at all the different factors, sociodemographic, lifestyle and health factors, to see if they had any associations with awareness. And what we found was that those who were female, middle or older age, and who had higher levels of medical literacy were more likely to be aware of the alcohol cancer link. In addition, those who had cancer experience, uh, higher levels of physical activity and higher levels of alcohol consumption were more likely to be aware. So very interestingly, when we looked at question seven, so this was where respondents were asked about opinions on alcohol. When we looked particularly at those who were aware of the alcohol cancer link, we found that even though these respondents were aware of the alcohol cancer link, 46% of them responded and agreed that drinking alcohol only causes cancer if you drink a large amount over a long period of time. Furthermore, we found in those respondents who were aware of the alcohol cancer link, almost a third of them disagreed with the statement, drinking alcohol increases your risk of developing cancer. So we can see here, even within those who are aware, a lot of confusion and certainly misconceptions held. So in terms of the findings of this study, certainly there is a gap and pervasively low levels of awareness of the alcohol cancer link at population level in, in Ireland, coming in at 43.7%. There were subgroups with even lower levels of awareness, so males, younger age, and lower levels of medical literacy. And while we did have groups that were more likely to be aware of the alcohol cancer link, as we can see them listed here, there were certainly misconceptions held within that awareness. For example, thinking that alcohol only causes cancer if you drink a lot of it over a very long period of time. So the recommendations based on the findings of this study, so the first recommendation would be to consider interventions to raise awareness of the alcohol cancer link. It would be really important that any such interventions would encompass both primary and secondary cancer prevention. So primary prevention, cancer prevention, preventing cancer from arising in the first place, and secondary cancer prevention, preventing further cancers from arising in cancer survivors. These interventions could occur at population level. So for example, healthcare um, interventions. So MEC might be one example of this, making every contact count. And the benefit of this is that you're actually raising awareness in both patients and healthcare personnel. And similarly, the NCCP has a lovely suite of e-modules for healthcare professionals, which can also help to raise awareness. Furthermore, in terms of alcohol cancer labels, we're very lucky in Ireland. We have the Public Health Alcohol Act 2018, which is undergoing implementation currently. And it's hoped that Section 12, which relates specifically to putting alcohol cancer labels on alcohol containers, will be implemented in 2026. And it has been shown in the literature and in jurisdictions such as Canada that putting labels on alcohol containers increases awareness. And this further increases support then for alcohol harm reduction policies. Additionally, within the literature, there is a lot of evidence around the effectiveness of mass media campaigns for smoking cessation. And certainly, reassuringly, there is a growing body of emerging evidence supporting the effectiveness of mass media campaigns in this alcohol cancer link space. So increasing awareness has certainly been demonstrated using mass media campaigns. And recent studies coming out of Australia have shown that they've managed to achieve behavior change as well. So reduce that alcohol consumption, which reduces the cancer risk. In addition to population level interventions, it's important to consider targeted tailored interventions also, so to help improve levels of awareness in subgroups and also to address these misconceptions. It's very important that we leverage existing programs and partnerships and that highlights the values of symposiums such as this. And very important, that there is clear, consistent messaging that it's any amount of alcohol increases your cancer risk. And of course, any such intervention should be underpinned by the WHO safer framework for best buys. So that's increasing the price of alcohol, reducing the uh, availability of it and restricting advertising amongst other ones. In addition, it's important, uh, the findings of this study would, rec would support the recommendation that we support policy. So we can see clearly in Ireland, there's a gap in awareness. So really important to use these baseline data to support ongoing implementation of the Public Health Alcohol Act, and particularly that section 12 of getting those alcohol cancer labels on alcohol containers. Furthermore, the recommendations will be to standardise surveillance, so to repeat this survey periodically, as happens in other jurisdictions, to ensure that there's ongoing high quality research and to ensure that there's close, sustained stakeholder engagement. So in conclusion, this study shows that there is a definite gap 
and pervasively low level of awareness of the alcohol cancer link at population level in Ireland and particularly within certain subgroups. Misconceptions exist within those who are aware as well. So it's clear that action is needed to address this and recommendations from this study based on the findings of the study include awareness raising interventions, policy support, surveillance and research and close and sustained stakeholder engagement. So with that, I'd like to thank you all for your time and welcome any questions or feedback on next steps from the floor.